back to another episode of How I Got the Shot. Today's episode is going to be focused on a photo shoot I did a long time ago, but the reason I'm highlighting this photo shoot is because these images are some of my favorites. If you go on my website right now, you'll still see them in the swimwear section because I just love these photos that much. Now, Carrie is an amazing model based out of Barbados or originally from Barbados. And I believe she's in Toronto, in Canada, somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. As I was looking through the footage that I had from this session, I realized that I only edited images from the second look. I, I don't remember why we didn't do anything from the first look, or maybe I just fell in love so much with the second look, or I just can't find it. But I wanted to still show you capture when I can actually show you these shots, essentially straight out of camera. So the wall behind her is actually like a, a small house looking thing on the beaches in South Beach. Um, it's like a, a small beach house type thing, like a cabana of sorts. In an attempt to keep things simple, I like to choose locations that don't distract from my models. So in this case, this location was perfect. It's completely neutral. So your eye goes straight to her. I just gotta make sure I don't overexpose the background, which you can see from the histogram over here, I didn't do. Now, if you look at my camera settings down here, we're at an F13, uh, 1 over 125 for the shutter speed and ISO of 100. So some people will ask, well, why would you shoot at, at such a high aperture? Why would you shoot at F13 of all things? Anytime that I'm shooting and the background is really close to my subject and I have no reason to blur it out, I don't blur it out. I want all of the detail that I can possibly get from that location. So I shot at F13, shooting at F13, also made sure I had all of the detail on her skin. I can push this back as far as I want to, you know, if I had to grab some type of highlight or something, I know I'm good to go because I shot at F13. Now shooting that dark, you have to compensate it with either your shutter speed or ISO. I always opt to have my shutter speed around one over 125. And if I needed to go brighter from there, then I would just boost up my ISO. So while we were trying to figure out what we were gonna shoot, uh, we both came to the conclusion that we should create images that would both kind of teeter that line between being commercial and then also like a high fashion editorial. Um, we wanted to give those, those vibes that she could sell pretty much any product in between those. So you'll see as she's posing, she's giving you different emotions, different feelings. These are definitely more on the editorial side and more emotional in a sense, you know, it's not big smiles, but then you get the big smile. So we're trying to show you both. Um, and obviously she's a hundred percent capable of doing both. And also, I've been saying also a lot. The other thing that I also wanted to make sure I focus on, and it's just a thing that I've learned to do over time is to make sure I move around my location. So what we're seeing now is on the corner of this little hut thing. I don't know what this thing is called, but if we go back, she's on the side of it and you see the lighting is completely different. So over here, the lighting is coming from this side and going straight in. And then once we go back here the lighting is straight on. My camera settings are the same. F13, 1 over 125, ISO of 100. And I'm pretty sure I was shooting with the 70, 70 to 200 because right here you can see my focal length is 155 millimeters. Everything's the same. She's giving you all these different looks. We're going to these smiles, come out of the smiles. Just a lot of variety from her. We're now on look number two. This was the main look that we were going for. Um, straight out of camera, you can see that I have my aperture at a 6.3, my shutter speed at 1 over 125, my ISO at 100. Now the reason why my aperture dropped from being a f13 to f.6 was to compensate for the lighting. So in the other shots, I was shooting in pretty much direct sunlight, but now I'm shooting her in shadow. So this is the shadow side of another one of those like storage container things. So this is the other side. So the reason why I chose this color versus using white is because one, we had just used it and I don't want to use the same thing twice, but two, I felt like the browns were kind of work with each other, kind of like a monochromatic type of thing or on an agalist type of situation. So, you know, just trying to apply a little bit of color theory. I have not done anything to these images and I really want to kind of make a couple of changes. So for my own brain, Let's check this, it's not bad. I kind of like the white balance. The only thing I, would, uh, thing I would do is rotate it. I feel a little bit better now. Um, so let me quickly apply um, this same kind of preset to the rest of them or 
So let's magically apply this to the rest of the images. Okay, now my brain feels better. All right, so let's just go through the images. You can see a lot of variety. She's just very skilled. Like she's done a, a, enough photo shoot. She has the look, she knows her body. Her spatial recognition is amazing. My in-camera cropping looks terrible. I'm glad I pulled back. That's enough, half these shots. You guys can see my Pelican case who decided to make a little cameo in the shots. We were having a good time, man. It's lots of laughs, but she is just amazing. I'm blessed to have worked with a lot of really good models. Really am. I feel like I might have to go back and actually edit some more images from there. So now I'm transitioning over to this other location. She's doing everything right, but I did not change my camera setting. So I'm shooting at an F6.3 still, one over 125 on the shutter speed and ISO of 100. And these look absolutely crazy, way overexposed. Even if I tried to save them, I don't think they're gonna be a lot. They're actually kind of, they are saveable. But I'm glad that I was paying attention, which you know you should. I really wish I had been shooting tether, but I know I wasn't at this time. Shooting tether back then just wasn't like a super high priority for me at every shoot. I tried to do it as often as I could, but like now, now I do it regardless. Like I always have to shoot tether. So these are more from what you guys actually saw me edit. And you can see like her posing. We just go really fast. You can see just how much without even have to lock into like letting everyone them low. You can really see the diversity in her posing. She's just the great model. And again, straight out of camera. Right now I'm at an F10, one over 125, ISO 100. Now, the reason why I'm shooting at F10 is the same reason why I was shooting at like a F13 earlier. It's because the background is right near her. I want all of the detail from that background. That's why we chose it. That's why there isn't a big gap between them. I wanted this specific spot. So all of the stuff that's on this side, that can all be taken out of Photoshop if I needed to. I could just take this and copy it over here, stretch it out or something. I definitely, I'm not saying I would never use AI or generative fill for this kind of stuff, but I'm not a, just not a big fan. I'm very skilled at creating stuff from scratch myself. Yes, you save a couple seconds, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just old school and stuck in my ways, but I much prefer to just kind of do it manually. I want all the credit. <laughs> um, and the lighting was changing on us too, because you guys can see here, F10 was giving me this, and now F10 is giving me that. So we were going back and forth between the clouds blocking the sun, and the clouds were not blocking the sun. So luckily that F10 is pretty neutral and I can always increase the brightness on these to kind of help them match up a little more. Now it won't be exact, but you can get pretty close. This was an attempt to try to like bring all the detail out, but I'm, I did too much. And for the sake of my own brain, let's just try to undo everything. Cause we need the darkness there. I'm actually kind of cool with everything. Cause I just didn't like how bright or how much detail was coming out of her hair. Yeah, that's too far Dion. That is too far. Not bad. But let's move on. And see, look, you're getting, you're just getting a good mix of like editorial type posing, editorial type facial expressions, or the things that you would see, just your 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 high end magazines, your L, your Harper's Bazaar, your Vogue, so on and so forth. And these are the types of posing that I get a model higher for all types of projects. So a lot of times when I'm working with models, my goal is to make sure. I'm getting them the kind of images that are gonna get booked for more jobs. They're gonna come back and hire me again. Like it's a it's a win win for everybody. So I'm always thinking about that. But then also, that smile is what gets you your your Disney, gets you your Target, it gets you your just your more you know family friendly companies, your Disney's and so on and so forth. And this is her not be understanding whatever I'm saying. What, Dion? What are you even talking about? <laughs> and now we see I went up to F13. That definitely underexposed the shot quite a bit, but I don't mind underexposing. I actually prefer to underexpose by a stopper, so because that just I just know when I do it that way, I'm not going to lose any detail in the sun and the uh, I said in the sun in the skin. I'm not going to lose any detail. Speed through, and then we get the one standing up. I remember as soon as she stood up and she grabbed the uh, the top of this, whatever you want to call this thing. What would you call this? beach cabana cover 
As soon as she grabbed it, I was like, oh, these are, I know these are gonna look good. I just gotta make sure I get my lighting right, get my settings together. And when I say get my lighting right, I mean, wait for the sun to do what it's supposed to do. You guys can see here, we're definitely in one of those scenarios where the sun is being blocked by the clouds. I probably could have not shot this at an F-13. 2017, yeah, let's not destroy it. Yeah, that sun was kicking my butt. All of these shots are pretty much underexposed. But you can see in the posing, just focus on the posing. And we're just gonna keep scrolling through. Sun came back out to be our friend. More variety in posing. Love that one. Just love that one. Like, I know I was giving her direction, but this is all her. I just had to just press the buttons. I had to make sure the camera settings were right. My angles made sense. I wasn't cropping out her hands or fingers. But I always know like I can, you know, I can extend something if I need to. And obviously all of these will be cropped down to a four or five. That's kind of my default these days. It's a crop down to a four or five, and mainly because of Instagram. That is not like my go-to when it comes to um, cropping. Yeah, it looks good. And let's go into our third portion of this. So once we got those shots, I wanted to get some walking shots. This was kind of like a default and I'm gonna say shoot. Like anytime I have a model outside, I'm always doing walking shots of some sort. And these, from a lighting standpoint, um, things changed. So now, as you can see, her face is in the shade because of her hair. So the sun is hitting her legs, her hips from here, hitting her shoulders, hitting the front of her swimsuit, hitting down here and hitting her feet, but her face is completely in shade. Now let's get to a more flatter image. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, she's completely in shade. So what that meant was, I had to change my camera settings. So let's keep in mind that choosing these camera settings are not accidental. I chose the F4 because I did want to blur out the background a little bit. I wanted to continue to isolate her. Shooting at F13 or F10 or something like that wouldn't have been a bad choice, but from a creative perspective, I just didn't want all of the detail in the sky and in the, the water to be in the shot. I wanted you to be focused on her shooting it at a one over 500 was because she's gonna be walking, need to freeze her movements. I did not want anything to be blurry. So you shoot it at a one over 500 to freeze her and I kept my ISO at 100. Still shooting with the 70 to 200, 70 to 200. I always kind of like mush that up when I say it. <laughs> 70, 200, like there's a hyphen there, sir. There's a hyphen. We got a little bird friend in our shots. Again, the big smiles, flirting with the camera, the movements. For those hair shots, I definitely would've needed to go with something a lot faster on my shutter speed. But that also got me prepared for another portion that we were gonna do. You guys saw that when I showed you guys like the actual edits from the shoot, what we did. See the smile, that smile, man. That's the shots that get you hired for those types of jobs. It gets you the commercial jobs. Gets you a, a ton of swimmer, especially if you're in Miami, being able to show that you can do lifestyle, you can do commercial, and you can do the editorial. Like you need that diversity. now. With our camera centers being pretty much the exact same, when you turn her body the other way, now she's getting the light coming even on her. Just look at the feel of that. Beautiful, beautiful shots. I think now if I had shot this again, I would have definitely brought in a reflector. Um, I just like using reflectors to create an additional bounce of light. I like the, the model to really pop. It's not that she's not popping here, but I'm just know once I take this into Photoshop, I'll have to do a couple of extra steps to make her pop out the way that I would edit these days. And we got friends, so many friends. So these were the shots. So this took us a while. You guys can see we kept trying. It's like, okay, we gotta get the hair to fluff right. We gotta get her facial expression to look right. We gotta get her body to make sure that's posing correctly. Everything else is right. We kept trying, kept trying. And we got one good one, apparently, because I cropped in on it. Let's see that we keep trying. I love these kind of shots, and I love that she was patient enough to keep trying. I feel like one of those is probably the one we chose. That might have been it. That looks good. All the hair strands are separated. Facial expression looks good. Pretty sure we chose one of those. All right, so now another type of walking shot is now the sun is hitting her directly in the face. Um, I changed my camera settings to an F over, I said F over, to an F4 and a 1 over 400 for the shutter speed and ISO of 100. And these are just walking out of the water shots. This is something typical. Most people kind of, I feel like you would think to do if you're shooting swimwear. I'm going to have her walk in the water. 
So I did think, okay, what can we do to be a little bit different? That was to make sure we kick the water as we're stepping. Let's get to those kick shots. Cause I'm thinking like, all right, if I can get her to kick the water, I can get these big splashes that'll come into the shot, make it stand out a little bit. Because again, this isn't like a unique idea to have her walk in the water. But I felt like the kicking of the water would make it pop a little more. But then add to that, the big kick. And I know my camera and my clothes got wet after doing this. I'm 98% sure like I didn't fully prepare <laughs> to shoot that day in, at the beach, or well, at least not to get in the water, but anything for the shot, everybody knows that is hashtag anything for the shot. What do you guys think? Do you think that the extra splash really made a difference? Cause I'm like, imagine her doing this and there was no splash at the bottom. Would the image have the same amount of impact? Yeah, she's just a really good model. I can't wait to work with her again. Yeah, we got so many dope shots from this. I really, I feel like I'm gonna have to go back, and just edit some more images or even better idea. You guys let me know, would you be interested if I were to go back and re-edit these images with my new style of retouching versus what I did back in 2017? Uh, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely, um, I'll make some time for it. It's beautiful images. She's the kind of person that like, if she lived here, she would be one of my muses. She would be someone that I would shoot with continuously, um, want to help her portfolio and also for sure to help mine out. You gotta have those kind of people that you can just depend on. And we did another shoot. We also did another photo shoot. We did one that was more on the fashion side and she brought the same type of energy, man. I'll show you guys that shoot too once I go through all the rest of these when I'm almost done. The kick was just working. Like I feel, and this is all in camera, so we ain't gotta worry about no AI, no none of that, cause I'm not a big fan of all the AI stuff, honestly. I get why it exists, but it's not my go-to. I'd rather do stuff practically. When it makes sense, cause sometimes you don't have time, you don't have the resources, you just gotta figure it out. Beautiful shots. And that concludes another episode of how we got the shot. Let's recap, um, we're shooting in Miami Beach. My camera settings, Pretty much stayed the same. Once I got to a location that made sense, we started off at a, a white wall, essentially a white wall um, at an F13, a one over 125 and 100 on ISO. When we moved into the shade, so we switched over to the shadow side of a, another location. Um, I switched up my aperture and brought that down to a 6.3. I had my shutter speed at one over 125 and the ISO of 100. Now, once I brought her onto the beach itself, you know, closer to the water. That's when my camera settings vary just a little bit. Um, but we're using all natural light, no reflectors, no strobes, no additional anything, except just knowing where the light is and knowing how to position her and then letting her be great once, you know, once we actually start shooting. So this, this is one of those scenarios where less is more and it has everything to do with your ability to connect with the model build that chemistry, build that chemistry, build that rapport, and everyone relaxing and having just a good time. Um, we just had a <laughs> just had a ton of good time. So I did say I was gonna show you guys the additional things that me and her did. So I'm gonna show you guys that now. think of those again i think mayor should shoot again so i don't know if that means i need to go up to canada or she needs to come back down here or if i need to see if she's in barbados i don't know but we definitely got to work together soon <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of how i got the shot make sure you guys um, leave a comment below if you have any questions thoughts concerns um, definitely hit the like button hit the notification button as well and if you haven't subscribed definitely subscribe there's going to be way more content like this coming up soon and lastly, if you have not visited my Patreon, make sure you guys sign up for my Patreon. I'm gonna be putting a lot more content on there. There will be similar episodes to this that I'm not gonna put on YouTube, um, where I'm going through older footage that I've done and, and showing you guys how I got the shots and you know what my mindset was as I was going through it in hopes of that the experience that I have will help you become a better photographer. So make sure you sign up on that Patreon. And like I always say, 
I know we spend a lot of time creating for other people, for clients, family members, friends, just other people in our network, but make sure you're creating for yourself as well. All right, peace.